When you think of animals on an acreage, you usually think of horses or sheep. Today we're going to talk about some more exotic animals. We have Dick Hyken, who raises exotic animals on his acreage. Dick, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let's talk a little first about your zebu cattle. How did you get interested in the zebu cattle? Well, uh, we seen a few of them at an exotic sale, and at that time, we became interested. We liked the looks of them. We liked their size and uh, everything we appreciated. And not only that, but they started a new registry okay. and association at that time, and so we were one of the forerunners of that. And you, you spoke of their size. They are small. They are very how, small. How, yeah. how tall are they? Okay, the uh, ours are about 38 down to the, about 32 inches as All far right. as the females. The bulls can be a little larger. Where do zebu cattle originate? They came from India originally. Uh, they are approximately 3,000 years old, and uh, but uh, they have been imported into this country in the last 15 to 20 years. Okay, and Dick, can you tell me a little about the feed and care of these animals? Well, they're quite easy to care for. Uh, they do need the grain, uh, they need the salt, the mineral, and wintertime, of course, hay, and the summertime, they're out on the pastures. And they have that distinguishing hump. Is that typical of the zebu cattle? That is. Uh, that is uh, a pure zebu. Uh, the bulls have the large hump, the cows have a smaller have a smaller hump. one. And Dick, where would I go to buy one of these? Well, there is uh, an association that has uh, the members who raises these names in. Uh, they go out on the internet, and uh, they do have exotic auctions where they have uh, the animals there. They are putting on some shows now. Right. Now, I know you have a lot of other exotic animals. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Oh, we have uh, camels, zebras. Watusi cattle, reindeer, uh, donkeys. We got a lot of things. A lot and, of things. And we got the fainting goats. Fainting goats. That sounds fascinating. Can it, I see some of those? We sure can. All right. We have Kathy Hyken. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the fainting goats. I have to ask, do they actually faint? No, not actually faint. They, If they're startled, they're, their muscles will stiffen and uh, they can just fall over and they stay that way 10 to 15 seconds and then they're up and running again. Can you tell me a little bit about the breed? They came to the United States in the late 1800s okay. into Marshall County, Tennessee. Uh, Farmhand showed up one day, nobody knows where he came from, they think Nova Scotia because of the way he was dressed. He had three does and a buck. No one knows where he came from. He never told anybody. And from that, that's where the fainting goats came from. So it's a bit of a rare breed? Yes, it's very rare. Uh, the only place in the world that anyone has ever known them to be. And uh, so because of the way that the, the number that there were in the beginning, they've been crossed with other, uh, other, breeds. other breeds of goat. And I notice there are a lot of different color variations and different types of um, hair and wool. Is that typical of the breed? It is because uh, there were so few in the beginning that they were crossed with many of the different uh, breeds of goats. So you'll see the long hair, short hair. Um, you see the different colorations. The original ones were black and white. They were okay. body white with uh, black neck and shoulders. Uh, do you raise them, Kathy, as pets mainly, or are they used for anything else? We raise them uh, as a minor breed conservation. We're trying to conserve the fainting goat. When there are people who will raise them for meat goats because they have more muscle for their size than any other type of goat. What kind of feed and shelter are needed for these goats? They need... Uh, uh, just the normal farm type feed, they can have uh, a good quality hay, pasture, uh, they can have some grain, 
they are easy keepers that way. The, the important thing is that they have a, a sheep and goat mineral block that's vital for these. Okay, and where could I get some fainting goats? There is an association that has uh, the names of breeders all across the United States, and uh, there, there are breeders in every state, so it would be easy to find that out. Sounds like a really a fun project. Thank you, Kathy, for being on the show.